I'm going to give you a little uh, rig rundown here. <clears throat> so we'll start with the uh, all-important guitar. This is the um, PRS uh, SC245, and had this for. I got this right after <clears throat> we tracked. Actually, it was shipped as we were tracking Blackbird, and I took to this immediately. There's just a certain uh, mojo this had. This is probably my probably my favorite. Um, it just got something real special, real throaty, uh, cool thing happening in the mid range. Uh, custom custom Seymour Duncan in the bridge position and um, other than that I think she's pretty much pretty much stock um, so uh, yeah and then we've got the Diodario I believe we were 10 through what 52 10 through 52 for strings and um, then we go out of this fancy uh, contraption here known as the wireless and uh, wire, go through all these things, thingies, things, and we end up at the pedal board. So the pedal board in this rig, we have an A and a B rig. So this rig, this one's a little bit different from the, the uh, is this the A rig? This is the A rig from the B rigs. This is the B rig. Um, we've got my Clyde wah pedal, which I've been using for 20, what year is it? It's 2017. So I've been using that pedal for 20 years. Uh, that same exact one. Um, I love that pedal. Uh, it's just got a really cool sweep to it. And then we've got the, uh, has another assortment of little toys here. Um, this is another one that's been here for a long time. I think I started using that line set, exact line six for, uh, I think that was around the second skin era of Mayfield. I integrated that into the setup. And um, some of these are newer. Uh, the M I started using the MXR uh, GTOD after Elvis, our producer, turned me onto that pedal for leads. Um, and then we've got the uh, octave, the slash octave fuzz, which I love. That's just got a really cool, gnarly. <laughs> And I love that. Um, then we've got uh, tuner, the micropog here, which. And then a little bit of delay I used to use once in a while. So this takes us to the switchboard here for my diesel. Um, pretty much self-explanatory, whatever. I just switches from dirty to clean and then to my lead. So let's come on over to my diesel stuff. This is the diesel cabinets, which are loaded with um, the, tel the tone tubbies, which are hemp cone, correct? And um, they just work really well with 4040 40 ceramics. And what is it, what is the uh, what do we have? These 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 cabinets are birch. birch yeah. yeah, it's birch. Two-ply birch. Two -ply birch, which really you wouldn't think that cabinets make that big of a difference, but they really do. Um, I highly recommend experimenting with your cabinet um, cabinet to amp relationship. Not to mention, obviously, your guitar to amp relationship, but it, it's all part of, it's, you know, the sum of the parts is it's kind of what it's all about, so you have to do a lot of experimenting. But the good fellows at Diesel, they know how to do it, and they suggested we try these, uh, these cabinets loaded with these, these tone tubbies, and as usual, they were right. Um, come on over here to NASA. Actually, it's not that NASA. It's pretty, pretty simple. Um, 
Diesel Herbert, which I've been using, as some of you know, for a decade plus. Um, once again, discovered it as we were recording Blackbird, and it really just sat nicely with Mark's setup. You know, Mark uses a lot of um, uh, a lot of space from a from a frequency standpoint. So it took a few years to find an amp that was still heavy enough to sit with what he does. This has something real special on the top end that that doesn't get in the way of what what where his. Uh, um, usual sound tends to fall. So, um, yeah, if it, and my motto is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I'm totally pleased. I'm not, I have no, no uh, plans of switching these amps anytime soon. Um, another thing you should know that's really interesting about these amps, any amp, uh, tube amp, I should say, is experiment with the, uh, experiment with the preamp tubes. Um, Peter, um, my friend at Diesel, he's, he's, he's incredible. And he'll come out when we get to Germany a lot of times and we'll just go through that, that, that first stage um, and switch out that 12X7. And I, we recently set up, what are we using now, Mullards, Ian? There's a Mullard in... The main one, right? Mm, the backup. Ah, yes, the backup. But, are, but aren't we using a Mullard in the, in the main as well? So that's been the same one since we bought it. We just uh, checked that, that head when he brought out the backup head. Right. And we liked it better in there. And then the other one is, uh, I think just uh, Peter's Magic Chinese tube. Yeah, Chinese. Yeah, I think it's Chinese tube as well. Yeah, Peter has this box of tubes that he'll show up with. It's like, it's, 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 it's like he has an armed guard when he brings it. No, I'm just joking. But it's, they're really special. And, and so don't minimize how important those preamp tubes are, first one in particular. Um, uh, it just, it really will shape the, it will really shape the sound of the amp in a drastic way. As every bit, in my opinion, every bit as much as the, as the power tubes will. Um, so yeah, then we've got the, um, where's the effects unit? Oh, there it is. Just a real inexpensive TC electronic um, M1, which I actually am still borrowing from a bass player, Brian. <laughs> He's let me borrow this for about 10 years. I just use it just for reverb, just run it through the effects loop, real simple. So, um, yeah, man, I, I love this stuff. And uh, the good folks at, at Diesel and PRS and all the other companies that help make up my sound have been very good to me over the years, and I'm very appreciative because um, we, uh, we can't make these cool sounds without them. So. Peace out.